Hey guys, I wanted to shoot a quick video about uh, an alternative CNC driver for running uh, Gerbil 32. I've got myself uh, a reasonably large CNC, which I don't run that hard. Um, when I say reasonably large, I guess uh, obviously not commercial grade, but you know, 1.2 metres by about 400 wide, uh, running a small um, router trimmer spindle. Um, and I had a CNC X Pro V5, which unfortunately blew a driver, we think. Uh, it went through a fairly long hassle of returning that. And they're a decent chunk of about, I think, 300 Australian dollars. So two things went through my mind. Um, maybe not that reliable. And I'd really like a backup because when I want to make something, I really want to finish making it. So I did a bit of looking around about uh, Gerbil 32. And uh, the guy who ported that over from uh, regular Gerbil, Bart Dring, D-R-I-N-G, mentioned a bunch of different boards. And one of them was uh, another difficult to pronounce name, Fizetic, uh, F-Y-S-E-T-C, I think. So he uh, ported over uh, Gerbil to suit the ESP32 uh, board. And uh, these guys in China, Fazetic, um, make uh, obviously a 3D printer interface um, running the ESP32 as well. On board that, uh, this fairly inexpensive board, and I think it was about 30 Australian dollars, so getting close to a tenth of the, the cost of the CNC X Pro uh, V5, um, it's got surface mount uh, 2209 stepper drivers. And I was able to fairly easily uh, modify the Gerbil 32 instances on GitHub that Bart Dring has loaded up there. He's actually got a file for this uh, Fazetic E4 board. And I'm no Arduino expert. I can load the IDE and then I could uh, mount the ESP32 board bring in the files and edit the text file dedicated to make sure that it picked up the specific board for this. Because the deal is it has to map certain pins of the ESP32 to certain pins uh, that were on the 3D board. But that really took me about an hour sitting on the table um, on a Sunday afternoon when I didn't have anything better to do. So I've hooked it up to a 24 volt power supply uh, fairly janky, excuse the connections, but I don't have any kids around, so uh, I was making sure that you couldn't jam your fingers where they shouldn't go, and uh, ran it, and I have to say it was absolutely butter smooth on uh, all the steppers that I connected it to. Um, these guys, um, the steppers, all tend to be uh, NEMA 23s, so, you know, they're not, not tiny, and... In the kit that came with this board fairly quickly, uh, I think I went for AliExpress or Banggood or one of those. Um, there was also some heat sinks and some jumpers, but thermal management um, would need to be managed across those surface mount drivers because if you blow one, you blow a lot. But I think for some people who are maybe making mostly printed CNCs or they have a CNC like this and they want a second board because uh, shipping out of China is pretty slow at the moment, and these aren't the sort of things that your local hardware store or electronic store necessarily carries, then I suspect this is actually a really good option. Um, I should say that Bart um, deserves some reward for his efforts of uh, porting over Gerbil to 32-bit. And he does release a series of his own boards in competition with these, but in the spirit of open source, he's also uh, set up these files. So, you know, I'd encourage people to actually spend good money with him, given his efforts. Um, you know, it, it's, uh, it takes a lot more intellectual input than just churning out these boards um, from behalf of the Chinese supplier on a race to the bottom dollar. But I think, you know, having some backup and things is really, really handy. Probably the main difference with the CNC X Pro, most of the ports are all mapped the same for misting and spindle speed control and blah, blah, blah. And you can certainly edit the, the software yourself. Is that I had to edit this software to set up um, my CNC, which has dual Y axis. Um, but editing that file as well wasn't particularly hard to um, map one of these ports uh, across to a copied Y axis to run two stepper motors for the Y on the CNC. 
And the other thing is, um, in terms of power management, you know, the X-Pro comes with some pretty nice uh, large, I think they're a 2.81 millimetre plug, whereas these are just uh, tiny little JST XH plugs. So some adapting would need to go on there, although I'm going to order some duplicate plugs, and I found uh, these aren't JST connectors, but they are uh, stepper um, mounts that have the right spacing so I'm going to make up some small adapters for those my CNC X Pro V5 comes back or replacement unit comes back tomorrow and I don't mean to de denigrate those guys as well because they've put in a lot of effort um, but I think I want to keep this uh, handy here in Australia in case my X Pro should go again in a hurry it'll be my, my main unit and I've also got a buddy who's making a little mostly printed CNC um, so I think, you know, this this Fazetic E4 will probably get swung into use for him pretty quick as well. The nice part also is I run several 3D printers. So given that this is actually a, a 3D printer board, um, in the event that I blow up a 3D printer card, then I'm pretty much covered whether it's uh, CNC backup or 3D backup. I should also add that um, this... Uh, board comes native from the factory with a Wi-Fi uh, installation of, I think it's Marlin, and it's just sitting there looking for a .bin file to update the firmware. So the really easy part was I was able to um, bring in a, uh, a compilation of Gerbil32, uh, tweaked it for dual Y-axis and created the .bin file through the Arduino interface. And then I just chucked that uh, over the air. I was able to Wi-Fi connect to this board with whatever it was running from the factory. The interface looks almost identical. It just clicked the button that set up update firmware, point it to the new .bin CNC Gerbil32 file I'd made on my laptop and uh, shoot it across the Wi-Fi. The card rebooted and, and bada bing, uh, I was basically gone straight from a, a 3D card to a CNC card um, in a matter of 30 seconds to reboot it. So I think this is a, a pretty good budget strategy of backup. I've just got to give some uh, thought to adapting these wires and the thermal management across here. I'm not really happy um, with any uh, thermal management. These tiny little uh, heat sinks that come from China usually have some adhesive pads at the back that end up being uh, the mother of all insulators. And uh, I think I've seen a few people, it might have been Big Clive or Julian Elliott or one of those YouTube guys run some tests and the thermal uh, properties actually went backwards when they just stuck on uh, cheap, crappy um, self-adhesive pads. So I think I'll, I'll do something a little bit better there and then mount the fan on it. But there's quite a lot of power output on this board for the money so I should be able to hook up uh, a little fan similar to what sits atop the CNC X Pro V5 once I just choose uh, probably some better aluminium heat sinks to mount on there I might even go with uh, liquid cooling or in the electric bike world we're in the habit of just dropping controllers in uh, in oil and letting convection take place in the oil and, and heat up as long as you don't tip it over on your workbench anyway Sorry for all the waffle, uh, but hopefully that really benefits somebody looking for a, a cheap card. Maybe you're building your first mostly printed CNC or you just might yourself want something to keep in the shed in case something goes bang and you've got that important job to finish. Uh, once I get my X-Pro back, I'll probably run some comparisons between the two and uh, maybe even see if I can take some thermal measurement of what those 2209 surface mounts are doing. Temperature-wise, I've got some little... Uh, temperature meters that I could probably epoxy to that and just see what's going on there as well. Cheers everyone.